and welcome to a new video. So I always forget to say this, so I'm going to say it at the start, so I don't forget at the end once I've got on my roll of all things Canva. If you are a business owner and you are making any of your own graphics in Canva, you are going to want to hit that subscribe button. You don't have to, of course, but I do release content every every single Friday. I'm sharing a new Canva tutorial. Every Tuesday, I'm sharing either business advice from a guest expert or I'm sharing business and branding advice from myself. So I hope it's so much value for you and you will just be like, oh, I never really realized I could do that. I was talking to someone this week who was like, oh, I never really thought about consistency or branding or my elements or anything. And like, I looked at her Instagram and she is making leaps and bounds. And I was just so, so excited. That's what she got and input she got and the growth that she got just from watching my free content. So if you aren't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It would mean the world to me and I hope that it would be serving you as well. Anyway, my name is Jackie. Probably should mention that as well. It's always nice to put a face to the name. Hi, feel free to put your name in the comments. Not everyone's, um, I don't really get to see who likes or who subscribes or all of those fancy things that easily. So if you want to put like, hi, I'm such and such in the comments, I'd be so thrilled to meet you. Um, some of you have been commenting on my last video. Anyway, I need to stop talking and get into this tutorial. It's a really, really great one. So I want to quickly chat with you today around how you can make sure that you're designing your Canva posts to make sure that they're fitting inside your Instagram grid correctly. So many times Instagram portrait posts or Instagram real covers are not fitting inside people's Instagram grids because they just get cut off really weirdly and they look really rubbish. And so I want to teach you how you can do that yourself really easily. And yeah, it's, it's such an easy way to do it. And I can't wait to show you this hack. So inside Instagram, you'll see here, this is just a preview of my grid at this moment in time. They are all squares. Everything is cut to a square. However, most of my posts, all of my posts, I would say actually aren't square. Say for example, if I click over to the Reels panel here, you'll see that Reels are obviously 1920 by 1080 wide. Um, that's pixels high and so. So you can kind of see here with the size of these, they're, they're tall posts and then there's, there's a design there going the whole way. So when you're inside your Instagram, you can either choose to grab a snippet or like a thumbnail from the actual video itself, which some people do and that works fine. But my preference to have a more curated looking grid and a more branded looking grid is because let's be honest, people, the only time people are seeing this cover is when they're looking at your grid. People rarely go to this Reels tab and if they do, they see the full Reel, great. The only time they're really seeing it is here. They're not really seeing it at the start of the Reel um, because Instagram just goes straight into the actual video. So I really recommend just either using a really great screenshot from inside the, the Reel itself, but that's really not gonna be branded. So I recommend uploading your own. So the way you do that is really simple. You just press this ever edit cover button here. You'll see that I can actually, I can choose one from this or I can go to add from camera roll and I can just choose in here, this graphic. Um, and you can see here, I can actually toggle up the top here to view to the profile grid. And it's gonna show me what it's gonna look like when it's cut into a square, which is just really helpful to look at. And so then I can save this cover as the cover for that reel. So it makes sure it's nice and branded. So I wanna show you how you can design that really, really well while being um, branded and while being really easy to design and while being something that looks good when it's cut to your grid. So let's get into this tutorial. So I'm gonna show you how you can do this for real covers as well as portrait posts. So so this one was a good example. This one here, for example, is a portrait post. You'll see that's actually a rectangle post. It's called portrait. It's 13, 1350 pixels high rather than 1080 pixels high. It just means you're taking up more space when someone's scrolling on their, on their general feed scroll. However, when they look at your grid, you can still see it's still cropped to a square. So we always need to make sure that things are looking good as a square itself. So how you do that is really quite simple. All you need to do is open up, I'll go and do um, an Instagram portrait size first, is open up Instagram portrait size post. You can just go into Canva and press create design and search Instagram. And then you can just click this portrait size here. You can see the dimensions there as well. And once you're inside, what I want you to do is actually all you have to do is so, so simple. I want you to first go to file, press view settings and turn on show rulers and guides. If you want the shortcut, it's just shift R. I use that one all of the time. But if you do this and you can see these rulers that now pop up at the sides and at the top, that's going to be our rulers. And we're going to use those to help to show us where our grid's going to cut things off. So next we need to work out where to line the grid up. And so it needs to be a perfect square in the center of your design. The way that I do this without doing any math, because I'm not a math queen, is I go to elements and I insert just a plain old square. What I do is I bring that right up to the edge of my design and I drag this square out to being the full width of my, my, of my canvas. Now, what I'm not going to do is do this, how it becomes a rectangle. I need this to become, to, to just stay a square. So I'm gonna actually press shift on my keyboard or hold it down. And you see when I hold down shift, it actually 
restricts this to being just a square. So I'm gonna drag this all the way to the edges, making sure that I'm holding down shift so it remains as a square. I'm gonna let go of both. And you can see here now I've got a perfect square in my design. But what it's not doing perfectly yet is it's not in the center of my design. So next I'm gonna click the square and drag it. So I'm clicking and holding right now and making sure that I wait until that horizontal pink line comes up across my design. You'll see it's I've got the vertical pink line, I've got the horizontal pink line. Horizontal pink line is wildly important because it means that that's perfectly centered in the design. And so once that's there, I'm gonna let go. Then I'm gonna hover my mouse over the top of the rulers here, click and then drag. And that's gonna pull down this purple ruler marker. And what I'm gonna do is drag that so it clicks itself on top of that square. Then I'm gonna do that again, click and drag and go to the bottom of my square. It's gonna to snap to that spot. And then I'm gonna click on my square and then delete it. And right now inside my design is this beautiful top and bottom marker that shows me where my Instagram is going to crop to a square. So, so simple. So the exact same thing that you can do with your real designs. What I recommend doing when you're finding, when you're designing a real cover is not to use Instagram reels, because if you type in reel here, it's actually going to come up with more of a video format. And that's just going to get really awkward because we don't want to design a video format. We're, we're designing a static image that's going to be used as a real cover. So to do that, I actually just type in Instagram story because they're at the exact same size. Um, and it just comes up as a normal kind of image file instead. Or you can just type in the dimensions 1080 by 90 and 20 pixels. So I'm gonna open that up and then I'm gonna use the exact same technique, but for a larger design. So if you haven't already, make sure you turn your rulers on. You can see mine already here because I've turned that view on. Uh, and then I'm going to go into my elements again, grab a square again, insert it, pop it right at the edge, hold down shift, make it a square right down to the other side, move it around until it finds its perfectly centered line. Making sure that you don't find, sometimes when your design is a bit fuller, it tries to center itself to other elements in the design. Those lines will be dotted. I want you to make sure you find a perfectly thick, full, undotted line to come across that middle bit. Then I'm gonna drag my rulers down here, drag my ruler down here, select my square and let go. And then again, I've got perfectly designed here that I can make sure that I design a really great cover so it looks great in my whole Reels cover feed. So you can see here some of mine in here that they still look good as a full design but I have really prioritized making sure that it looks good inside this square as well. So this is the file that I use for myself as I'm designing graphics for my business and my real covers. And you'll see here that again, I've got these perfect little lines here, down here, and you can also see that design as a full is looking really nice. But a hard thing to do is kind of cut images off. So you see here for this one here, I've just popped a little like um, cloud for myself underneath here. Um, this one here, I've just chopped her off and it doesn't really matter. Like when you go to my full grid and you kind of look, if this design is a little bit down a little bit here, like it's a little bit weird that she's a tiny bit cut off, but it's totally okay. Um, so just making sure that like, cause what I don't want to do is do this because then it's just really awkward. Her head, like if I just put some, I'll just put some rectangles here so you can picture this even better. It's just a little bit awkward for her. She's just like popping her head up out of the square. So what I want to do is just make sure I bring her up. So her full body is actually in it, not a full body, but a, a non-awkward amount of her body, not just a popping up head. And then making sure that like, I'm really prioritizing what it looks like inside that square. Cause that's the most important thing. That's where people are viewing it the most inside your real covers section, you wanna make sure that it's looking nice, but that shouldn't be your priority. That's usually how I teach it to my students. And so this one here, again, you can see all of the main content is all inside that section. Again, all of this, I I actually don't recommend this one because this, 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 this text isn't really readable inside your Instagram grid because your Instagram grid is only ever going to be viewed small. Um, like when, when someone clicks on, say if someone clicks on this reel, then they're, they're barely gonna actually see the actual graphic itself. So having small text on that isn't going to be that helpful because this isn't super readable from inside your grid. So having a bigger text for these kind of things is more important. So you'll see for most of my designs, I've done quite big text, quite big text, quite big text and image, um, quite big text. And so that's usually how I teach my students to do things is if you do that larger text, it means that it's visible on your grid, means that you can design really nicely to make sure it's inside that square. Um, and it looks really branded when you go to someone's full Instagram. It's not just some random screenshots from yourself as you're recording a video at the same time. So I hope that helps you. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you next time for another one. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this one. I'll see you next time. Bye.